This is episode 3 of I'm Just Older Darling. Hello, kia ora, my lord. My name's Michelle, I'm the host of I'm Just Older Darling, a series of conversations with members of our communities who are sometimes referred to as elders. Their stories, their words. This was recorded during the lockdown of COVID-19. This conversation experienced some network issues, shall we say. I hope you enjoy it. I think it's still audible. Apologies for some of the quality. During this recording, there's some Māori words, so here's some translations. Fano, family, wahini, woman, takatapwe, close friend of the same gender, intimate friend of the same gender. This conversation will start with Lavinia's pepiha, which is a formal introduction of whakapapa. Again, a new word, her heritage, who she is. Kia Lavinia Kini Taui Toku Inua, Ano Kiyanga Te Awa, Mamali Te Waka, Pangalu Te Maunga, Nga Te Manawa Te Marae, Te Hikachu Te Hapu, Te Raroa Te Iwi, Ko Tenei Te Taha I Toku Mama, Te Taha I Toku Papa, Utukura Te Awa, Nga Tuki Matafaurua Waka, Pukatawa Te Marae, Hi, Lavinia. Tell us about you. So, kia ora. Uh, my name is Lavinia Kingi Kari. I live in Christchurch. How do you feel about being an elder? Oh, God. Uh, how do I feel about being an elder? Well, I um, sometimes I I don't realise that I am the age that I am <laughs> uh, because I don't feel like I'm I'm over sixty and uh, yeah I just feel like I'm my experience of being an elder Chakatapui was um, when I hear the experiences of of um, other Wahine Māori I. I'm, I feel like I'm really different because I didn't come out until I was 30. And with that, I was, um, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't really, I didn't have a lot of experience around being in the, in the community of uh, gay lesbian Takatapui. My experience was mostly from uh, Wahine that had been in the scene since they were young women in their communities and I um you know I, I came with a whole new set I came with a set of values that um of being in a heterosexual relationship um uh, for the early part of my life. The, the early part of my life and and as you know that comes, you know, there's there's certain privileges that you have when you're um when you're heterosexual and those privileges are uh, just small things. Um, I I realised that um, you know walking down the road holding your your girlfriend's hand, you know those sorts of things I wanted to do, and I felt that it was my right to do that. So I wanted to kiss my girlfriend in public, you know, like like you do when you are with a male, and. In the early days, it, I felt uncomfortable with that, but I, I also um, was determined to to do that for myself, to hold on to my heterosexual privileges. What were your early experiences? My earliest uh, times of being within the movement uh, was when I was involved with the Women's Refuge, which is a feminist movement around uh, that's been in the New Zealand since the early 70s, but, it, but it's actually been practised a lot earlier by um, by families or by by, by Takatāpui, by certain people uh, to keep women safe from domestic violence. Uh, so my education was mixing with people like um, some of the, the wahine tour that were involved with refuge at the time were people like Mediana Pittman, um, Norma Bowser, she was the uh, national 
coordinator for the women's refuge movement when I first um, became involved with refuge. And so a lot of those Is there anything else you'd like to say? ...assisted me in um, building up my own knowledge base around women's rights, feminist issues, and and also in, during that time, um, I was on my own journey of um, who I was. So it really, uh, it really established the person that I am today, um, those early days. It really helped me to come out as a as a woman and build my confidence around who I am. How does it feel to be an older Takatapui in the community? Being an elder in the Takatapui community, uh, well, it feels it feels weird because, um, like I said earlier, I don't feel like I have had enough experience to be to be considered as, a, as an elder of the community. And uh, in the early days, I struggled with that because there, there was a, a camaraderie around experience uh, with, with, with other women uh, that were around my own age but, and some older. <clears throat> there was a camaraderie and empathy around the, ex, the women's rights issues that they had supported on their own journeys, and I, you know, I, um, I, I haven't ex- really experienced that. Um, I was in a movement, and I was a part of uh, the march in Auckland, um, where we marched, where um, our rights became a human rights issue, and so we we won that. And so I was amongst all the other Takatapu, Bano, and and people in Auckland. Um, celebrating that achievement for the for our community, and so um, last year the white Tommy was going on on marches throughout the city, around the Mutu, who were uh, who had been in the in the, yeah yeah. So um, one of the first feminist issues and uh, that I was a part of was the on the march for when we were when we won the um, the right to be the right to um, uh, a human rights issue and that was that was when I met a lot of Takatapu in Māori. What elders do you think impacted your life? Oh, well that's a huge question because um First of all, um, it would have to be my parents uh, because I, but I feel like I have, you know, the, the elders who have impacted my life would be my parents uh, and people like uh, my nanny for Plumity, nanny, nanny for Nakupa. As a, as a young girl, as a young mother living in Auckland, I I researched, I listened to the news, I knew a lot of my uh, my whakapapa or my family tree from where I come from and um, where I come from and where I come from is this little place from nowhere that has recently come into the news because um, we just unbelt a big statue in Tangaru in commemoration of Nana Finakupa and her mokopuna. So Tangaru has been in the news over time over the past 30 years, more so because the community, uh, the community has people from that community who are in television or in, in other areas of society that influence um, that influence society as a whole. Um, this little place has hosted a Takatapui gathering, uh, which at the time myself and my, my wife were living back in Hokianga. 
and we were actually living in Hokianga, so she, we were part of that um, group that communicated with uh, the Auckland Pukatabu Jackson, a conference there, and it was it was pretty amazing um, to have all these gay people, colourful people, come to this little uh, homophobic little town in Northland. And um, the visibility of Takatapu in, in that community has only come about through the, uh, through the, through the people that are Takatapu. And um, it's interesting. An interesting thing for me is that we, in that community, we all come from this one Tupuna. And she married, she, she got together with this American white man called Billy, Billy Horde. And um, our Tupuna, there's, uh, there's all the families that live in, that have come off this woman. Her name's Tioki. And uh, and off that Tupuna, um, there there are actually quite a lot of Tukatapu living in that community. And um, and when we held that conference, it brought out if you, the people who came out of the community, the straight people. Um, to me, were surprising. Um, a lot of my first cousins said, "Hey, that was fine." The people that were meant to be there were there. And we had an awesome time. Um, I've got some uh, nephews and nieces that are involved in television at the moment, and they do really well. And they have, um, I believe, helped to bring our small community of Pangaree out of out of the closet. In lockdown, currently, do you think technology has had an impact on your feeling with community? Oh, definitely. I think um, technology has a huge impact on the community. Um, down here in Christchurch, we I'm, I'm part of a little group of uh, Māori takatāpū, and um, you know we're still out there doing our bit um, with uh, uh, delivering food parcels and hygiene packs to people in the community, um, and. The contact is really quick through social media and uh, I feel like we've been able to communicate more effectively and help each other to be entertained. There's there's been so much information and um, ways people have been dealing with lockdown. Uh, It's become overwhelming for me sometimes. Some days I don't, I can just hear my phone beep, beep, beeping and uh, I just don't answer. I just think, oh... I've had enough. So, um, yes, I feel like technology has had a huge impact on our our community and keeping us in touch with each other. What would be the advice you would give to a younger person on a road, on a similar road as yours? Be involved with a support group, uh, young people that, uh, that you feel that you get supported because you know there might be times as a young Tapatapu that you uh, come across people who are not very nice. So always having that support group around you. Uh, be involved with a group of other Tapatapu that uh, are looking at issues, feminist issues, political, um, what's happening in, the, in New Zealand or Aotearoa. Um, looking at the communities that are around us Get well informed about issues that are happening within um, within, within your own age group and get involved uh, because sometimes it's, it can be quite lonely out there as a as a young person and um, be involved with with uh, older people, older takatapu that have a life experience of, of and they're able to share some of the struggles. Uh, that have uh, you know sh- that have able to share their story around the historical struggles of Tapatapu, and uh, remind people, remind the community of you know what political struggles that they've had to um, be a part of in order to get to where we are today. You know, there's 
uh, other Takatapuis paved the way for young Takatapuis who don't have to, who, who some don't have to, ex- have to experience the horrible things that were done uh, to Takatapu in the past. I mean, it's so much, it's so, for young people, even at school, you know, it can be, there's been a lot of um, young people that have um, put themselves forward and led that have been leaders of um, how to survive in schools as young Tokatapu, the community of LBGT. How do you feel um, representation, and this is a massive question, um, that Tokatapu and um, women of colour within the rainbow community, do you think our voices are listened to? Um, To a certain extent, I think our voices are listened to. But you know, it's like it's still, it's still the journey is still slow. It's slower in terms of um, other issues within our society. It just seems like we've had a big fight because we're seen as our community is seen as not being uh, normal. So for me, it's uh, my my aim of is that it is normalised. You know, um, our community is another part. It's just it's just a bigger part of that bigger picture of um, identity within the society. That it's not seen. You know, that it's not seen as being different. Thank you, Lavinia, for the conversation. You are one of the most beautiful individuals I know. Thank you. I'm Michelle, your host, I'm Just Older Darling. It's brought to you by Same Same But Black. There's a series of conversations with members of our community, sometimes referred to as elders, movers, shakers, doers, musicians, based in West Auckland and wider New Zealand. Each person has an interesting story and a perspective of their life and how. Thank you for taking the time and I hope you enjoy the conversations with I'm Just Older Darling contributors. Look forward to catching up with you on episode four. 